Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, June 2nd, 2016, and Friday, June 3rd, 2016. Typically, we do not do a market preview for Fridays, as most of the week has already played out. People tend to head out, especially in the summer, which we're heading into now. And this week will be no exception, given the fact that it's a short week, and uh, Monday and, I'm sorry, Tuesday and Wednesday were, well, Tuesday was expectedly light, but Wednesday was a little lighter than I thought. We did pull off some nice stuff on the stock side, but uh, just really, really slow early on. And I thought with the first day of the new month and Memorial Day behind us, things would pick up, and I wasn't much of a pickup. So uh, we'll just leave it at combining the rest of the week into this one preview here. Uh, the ES front month futures contract daily chart up on your screen right now. You can see we remain tucked right underneath. It's amazing, isn't it? That risk line, how specific is that? We can't get a close above that. We gapped down this morning and came back up to close around flat for the day, but we still have not closed above that risk line. That is a wall. So far, anyways, it's been a while. You could obviously look at this and say, hey, the signal was back at the beginning of April. Now it's the beginning of June. I'd say the signal played itself out by showing the exhaustion in the market. We kind of drifted down, and now we're back up. But at the end of the day, the signal is the signal, and what that means is until this risk line is broken, there's a sell signal on the broad market. Obviously, if we close above this and then take out that day's high the next day, that negates the signal, and you usually would get a run. And I'll also point out that this is basically, you can look at it as sort of a cup and handle or even par uh, partially a inverted head and shoulders formation on the broad market right now. So what I will say is if we do break out, if we do get above about uh, 2110, let's say, on the ES, uh, they could get a, a several day strong run to the upside and we got to make sure we're ready for with some stocks with some nice patterns if that happens. All right, so let's look at what else happened today. We had uh, crude oil down seven cents to 48.92, not a big deal, sitting right on the 10 day moving average. Gold dropped $2.30, still sitting on, look at that red static trend line being used exactly as support. So amazing. Uh, the S&P, like I said, gained $2.37. We'll look at how it played out intraday in a minute. NDX was down three, which is basically flat as well. The SOX gained four. Again, this is a breakout. Same type of pattern. This is what I would think. If the market can get above that risk line and break out, this is what you're going to see is several days in a row of strength on the SOX because you've got that kind of construction. Biotechs have just hit a new, they, they hit a nine bar, a new start, startup phase completed to the upside, and we're hitting the static trend line of the last move down. So again, this is kind of a wall. So some mixed signals in the market. The biotechs would suggest lower. There's a sell signal on the broad market, but the uh, socks look strong. And if the broad market does break that sell signal, it's going to look really strong. VIX down a penny doesn't really matter. Trend closed at 1.10. That's about where the 10-day moving average is, which doesn't really give us any information in terms of overbought or oversold at that number. NASDAQ volume was 1.6 billion shares. That's around the average, the 10-day moving average. Uh, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ plus 690, so positive breadth in the market. And on the New York plus 979. Google lost 39 cents, which is a blip for Google. Apple lost a buck 40. Amazon uh, swept the all time highs and then closed. And by the way, when I go to projection mode, Amazon now has a 13 sell signal. Now, on the sell signals on Amazon, the one at the end of last year was very good, led to a multi hundred point sell off. Uh, the one in April 1st was not that good, got broken almost immediately. So we'll see. Uh, it's on 50-50. That's a signal that's usually more like 75%. So what does that mean when it's 50-50 right here? I'd say, well, well, we'll just have to see. Obviously, if the market breaks out and runs, Amazon would probably be part of that. Netflix down a buck, not a big deal. So overall, it was a, really a boring day, let's face it. Uh, let's take a look at the ES in the intraday on 5-Minute Candles. This is the last two days. So, so far for the week, remember, you can see Friday's closed way off to the left, and then the junk trading Monday for the holiday. So Tuesday we had what was really a gap up from Friday's close, sold off after a flat, a really flat first hour, sold off to fill that, went lower, and then recovered late in the day. Now on Tuesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, getting my days of the week confused, on Wednesday we gapped down pretty good under the lows of Tuesday. For the first 30 minutes, literally nothing, some of the flattest 30 minutes you can recall. Uh, then we finally popped on some news and kept heading up enough to fill the gap. But then the rest of the day was kind of a joke. It was every time we made a new high, we sold off, made a new high, sold off, made a new high, sold off, and closed about even. If you look at the NASDAQ futures, it's about the same, actually much flatter after the first two hours. The, the range was already established. So not a very interesting session. I'm happy to pull off some of what we did for the day. Rich had a nice column with BRX that ran up here. Uh, that was good. We also had a good long in the Goldman Sachs. That worked out well. 
Uh, look at that 13 cell signal on the gold and the late in the day. Unbelievable, right? Uh, right at the high. All right. So what do we have to look forward to for the rest of the week? Well, we do have a little bit of data on Thursday. Remember, because of the Monday holiday, they shift around some of the data. So here's, let me read it off to you. Thursday, challenge of job cuts an hour before the bell. ADP employment change at 8.15 a.m. Initial and continuing jobless claims, that's the weekly number, an hour before the bell at 8.30 a.m. The weekly natty gas number is at 10.30 a.m. The weekly crude oil inventories, which gets pushed from Wednesday to Thursday because of the holiday, is at 11 a.m. And then keep in mind, Friday morning, here's the, here's the reason Friday morning at least could still be exciting and potentially why Thursday afternoon might not be if they're waiting for this. Friday morning, you've got the unemployment rate and trade balance, two huge numbers an hour before the bell, and then factory orders and ISM services 30 minutes into the market. So, um, you know, there's some there's some big data there, probably even bigger than what we're going to see on the on the, for the stock stuff uh, here on Thursday. So just be uh, very aware of that, and uh, we will see what we get. We'll be in the lab as usual, trying to help you out make some money. Charts brought to you as usual by eSigma 12. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks and hope to see you in the trading lab. Have a great uh, rest of your week, both Thursday uh, and then Friday.